Hey, Magic friends, welcome back. This is your captain speaking here on Captain Clyde's MTG. We're back again for mo more Unfinity videos. If you even care, but don't worry. If you don't care, that's fine. Go over and check out the new videos for the box opening series uh, where you can actually listen to me ramble, but the difference is you can watch me open cards that you give a damn about. Because, yeah, Infinity, who cares, apparently. At least not on this channel because nobody views that crap. Anyway, but I'm going to run through the run through the leaks again that we have for today. We're getting close to all of them. Uh, they're coming out the first weekish of August, October. October, that's close to August, right? Anyway, so we're about one week away from release in a half. Right before Magic 30 and all that good stuff. Don't forget to subscribe. Let's run it. First, we have the complaints clerk. Oh, she's so nice looking. A white and three for a 3-3. Three, three. Complaints clerk enters the battlefield. You get to open an attraction. Whenever you roll a one, create a 1-1 one, one white clown robot artifact creature token. Now, so the funny thing about this is if you go to the complaint clerk, I could see why you would get a 1-1 one, one clown. And open an attraction because, hey, look, over there, squirrel. Anyway, moving on. Next we have the Pick a Beeble. So if you guys don't know what the Beebles are, go check them out. They're pretty neat. Two, three, and six. Attraction that when you roll, uh, pick a number of luck counters on Pick a Beeble equal to the result and create a treasure token. If there are six or more luck counters on Pick a Beeble, claim a prize. The prize is create two treasure tokens, then sacrifice Pick a Beeble and open an attraction. This is silly. Anyway, moving on. Next, we have the blank, 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 Trespasser. Uh-huh. So, blue and one for a 2-1. When it enters the battlefield, you may put a name sticker on it. It's three spots for one, but okay. Uh, blue and one. This creature gets plus one, plus oh to end a turn. For each name sticker on it, it cannot be blocked. It's not too shabby, I guess. If you're going to play it in draft, or sealed, or God knows what else. Uh, we have a quick fixer here. Black and two for a 2-3 with menace. That's not too bad. Whenever the quick fixer deals combat damage to a player, you get to open an attraction. Yeah, so all right. We have Plate Spinner, two blue and three enchantment. Whenever you cast a spell, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. Then balance a card from outside the game on one of your fingertips. When that card falls or touches another card, sacrifice Plate Spinning. Ugh. I was getting ready to say that's a pretty good card, but on second thought, hell with that. Now we have the Blue Ribbon Special, or just Blue Ribbon. So for one, you get a Artifact Equipment. When it enters the battlefield, you ask a person outside the game which creature you control uh, is most deserving of the blue ribbon, and you get to attach the blue ribbon to that creature. The equipped creature has best in show, which means whenever another creature becomes the target of a spell or ability you control, you may copy that spell or ability. If you do, copy the copy targets this creature. <sighs> I mean, whatever. Next, we have Information Booth. Interesting. Uh, for a four or a six, if you visit it, you get to draw a card. That seems pretty good for an uncommon, not going to lie. Next we have Park Reentry. So two white and three sorcery return up to two target creature cards that each have a hat or a mana value three or less from graveyard to your battlefield. So you put a hat token on a big nappy creature, you literally can get it back with this. Interesting. Next, we have the playable Delusionary Hydra, because why wouldn't it be? Uh, for two, you get a you can turn a creature into a tap, draw a card, discard, more for a looter. Or for four, whenever this creature attacks, you gain three life and draw a card. Wow, that seems pretty good. Uh, you can also make them one fives or four fours if you're really feeling froggy. Next, we have Urza's Funhouse. Yes! It's a land. It taps for Cuddleless, and it also taps for infinite mana. Uh, activate only once and only if you control Urza's Mine, Power Plant, and Urza's Tower. Seven and tap, head to askurza.com and click Urza's Fun House. Oh, good God. Um, hang on a second. I'm going to have to go check that out. All right, I'm back. Uh, yeah, it's pretty funny. Uh, make three, three guys, destroy a creature, make, it, make this thing a four, four. Uh, tons of stuff. You click on it, it gives you a random thing. Tons of giggles. However... You don't have a phone or something with you. This thing's going to be useless. So anyway, moving on. Next we have Form of the Approach of the Second Sun. Is it just me or does that look like feet? Anyway, so white and four enchantment. When this enchantment enters the battlefield, you may gain seven life. You become a card until you leave your 
you become a card until you leave your library or the library is shuffled. Put yourself 7th from the top, balancing the card on top of balancing the cards on top of your head. What the when you draw yourself, win the game. When you or more cards fall off your head, exile them and all cards on your head, then sacrifice this enchantment. This is whatever. Anyway, moving on. Next we have bumper cars. So for this attraction, two, three, or six will get you a visit for target creature must be blocked this turn. Yeah, wah wah. Next we have the tunnel of love. This attraction for a two or a six lets you choose an opponent. They choose a creature they control. Then you choose a creature you control. You may exile the chosen creatures. If you do, return them to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Otherwise, the chosen creatures fight each other. <laughs> That's funny. I like it. Anyway, it's playable too. Next, we have Busted. Blue and one instant counter target spell. This is controller pays X, where X is the number of words in the name. The words in the name with the most words among permanents you control. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. Do calculus playing this game. Anyway, standard procedure. Oh, that's funny. It's an instant. What the? One, reveal standard procedure. Oh, okay, so for one, you can reveal it from your hand. If you do, choose an instant or sorcery card mana value three or less currently legal in the standard format. Standard procedure becomes that card until end of turn. Huh. Interesting. That's, I smell shenanigans, but anyway. Moving on, next we have the Parodice Pero Lost. Oh, this is cute. Two green and three instant. Roll two six-sided dice, return any number of cards with total mana value X or less from your graveyard to your hand, where X is the total number of those results. Exile Parodice Dice. Eh, I mean, it's legal. It's five mana, though, so, you know, who knows. Next we have Souvenir T-shirt. Yay! Three colorless equipment. Gear up. Sponsored by Wizards of the Ghost. Which means, as Souvenir T-shirt enters the battlefield, you roll two six-sided dice for each Magic branded item you're wearing, roll an additional six side dice, choose two of those results. Equip creature gets plus X plus Y, where X is the first chosen result, Y is the second. Oh good god. Um yeah, get your game on boys. Wear your wear your wear your stuff you playing this card. Next we have the trapeze artist, one white for a two one flyer. Well, that seems pretty good. Uh enters the battlefield by being a uh, trapeze artist enters the battlefield by being flipped from a height. Of at least one foot, if it lands face down or didn't turn over completely at least one time during the flip, return it to owner's hand. <laughs> That's funny. At least it doesn't die. But um bum Anyway, moving on. Next we have Spinneret Arachnobat Bat. Ugh, okay. Green, black, three for two, four to reach. Uh, enters a battlefield, open an attraction. As long as you control three or more attractions, gets plus two, plus oh, and has menace. And for five mana, that's kind of steep. Anyway, moving on. Next, we have Strength Testing Hammer. Uh, for one, you get Artifact Equipment. Uh, when Equipped Creature Attacks, roll a six-sided dice. That creature gets plus X plus O to their turn, where X is the result. Then, if the if it has the greatest power or is tied for the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield, draw a card. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Next, we have Icing Manipulator. Yeah, get it? Icing. Cake. Anyway, green and one for a one-three. Uh, each plus one plus one counter on a creature you control is also a food token. Okay, so you can sacrifice it to gain three life. Anyway, for a green and three, tap, roll two six-sided dice for each odd result. Put a plus one plus one counter on a creature of your choice. Activate only as a sorcery. Thank God this isn't legal. Anyway, moving on. Next we have the Ferris Wheel. Wow, is this what's called? The Ferris Wheel. Anyway. It's an attraction. If you visit it on 4, 5, or 6, choose target creature that hasn't been phased out with Ferris Wheel. That creature phases out until you roll a 3 or less while rolling to visit your attractions. Wow, that's actually pretty good because you can actually like, phase something out and then you choose not to go to the attractions anymore. Nice. Next we have Vulcan Squirrel Whacker. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> Professional. So for a blue and three, has star star. So as the Vodalkin Squirrel Whacker, oh my, I can't do that. Anyway, when it enters the battlefield, you roll six side dice twice. Its its base power becomes the first result. Base toughness becomes the second. If you would roll a die or more, roll one or more six sided dice. Instead, roll them, and you may exchange one of the results for this card. I'm not saying it again. Power or toughness. <laughs> 
Uh, it's legal. God, just play it so you can say the name. Anyway, moving on. Next we have Astro Aquarium. Okay. Blue and two for an artifact. When it enters the battlefield, you may put a art sticker on it. One and tap. Until the end of turn, target creature power becomes a blue shark with a base power and toughness 4-4. Four, four. If the cracks on the aquarium are, are completely covered, that creature becomes a blue octopus with base power and toughness 8-8 eight, eight. instead. Activate only as a sorcery. Interesting. Okay, anyway. Next we have Storybook Ride. Yay! Uh, for 2, 5, or 6, if you visit you Exile Top X cards, your library exiles the number of attractions you visited this turn. You may play those cards this turn at the beginning of your next end step. If any of those cards remain exiled, put them on the bottom of your library in any order. This seems really good. Not going to lie. Next we have Hardy of Mira's Marvels. It looks like an evil guy with a mustache. Anyway, two green and two for a 4-4. Four, four. Not bad mana. It's not label though, so it must be silly. Uh, when here's the battlefield, choose a number. Whenever you cast a spell, the chosen number of lines of flavor text. Put that many plus one plus one counters on target creature, and it has partner. Oh, good God. Moving on. Next we have, it came from Planet Glurg. That's kind of cool. Blue, green, and XX for an OO. OO. You may have, it came from Planet Erg. You know the battlefield as a copy of X different creatures on the battlefield. It has their total power, total toughness, combined mana cost, all text boxes, names, art, and so on. Oh my lord. Thank god this is illegal because it's just silly. You have three mana to copy a creature. You can copy two creatures for four. For f It takes six to get three. So technically, still, this is better than Vesuvian. Thank god it's not legal. Moving on. Next we have the Log Flume. That's an interesting way to call it. Anyway. A three or a six, if you get to visit, choose up the four creatures you control. Those creatures jump into a log until the end of turn. Creatures in a log together can't be blocked unless they are all blocked. If a spell or ability you control targets one of them, it targets all of them. That's going to be funny. Yes, I would like to jump all my guy, jump my four one ones into a log flume. I attack. I would like to plus one, plus oh, one of them, and draw a card. Now it targets all of them. So I draw four cards for one white. What is that, Defiant Strike? Yeah, seems good. Moving on. Next we have the Resolute Vegasaur. Oh, God. Green and two for a three through a trample. Whenever you roll a third die each turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Resolute Vegasaur. I don't even know why that matters. Anyway. Uh, all right. So we get to end on a, uh, a Vegasaur. That just makes you sad on the inside. So anyway, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate your time. As always, don't forget, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. The comments down below will help feed the YouTube algorithm for those who actually want to look at this crap. Uh, if you want to help out the channel, you've already subscribed. If you, thank you very much for subscribing. And second, eBay store, lots of cool stuff. Patreon, sign up for a monthly fee. You're going to get entered into free drawings, get free swag. I promise it'll be cool. And my email is in there too if you just want to drop in line to say, hey, hey. And remember... Until next time, be kind, and I hope to see you across from the game table.